quick background on uh, Boston and who we are. So we've been working with um, Supermicro for the last 22 years. We've been one of the first companies to have brought Supermicro products to Europe, and we've been building value on top of Supermicro solutions for um, you know, that period of time. The technology that we're going to speak about today is the uh, Lustre appliance that we have. Um, and even at this show this week, we were just awarded the Intel Elite Partner as a recognition for our contribution towards all the work in the, uh, in the Lustre field as well. Um, one of the partners that we have here today is Rosemary from Alexis, and um, she'll be speaking to us as well about the client throttling capabilities that we have within our Lustre appliance also. Um, so this year we also opened up a number of uh, factories around the world, so we've actually got a global reach at this stage, even though we're initially based in the UK, we now have got factories out as far as um, Australia, India, the US, Germany here, Munich as well, um, and in the UK, so with uh, global touch. So onto the Lustre appliance, our data scaler L. Um, so to start with, I'll just run through some of our existing customers who are using this solution in uh, you know, real world production environments. And um, one good case study we have at the moment is Montana State University over in the US. So the interesting thing that they're doing with Lustre is it's not being used in the traditional dedicated HPC file storage uh, use case. They're actually using it as a central pool of storage for a lot more of their sort of day-to-day -day research and uh, an academic data store. So we have a number of not just um, uh, HPC standard clients, but we've got a number of data transfer nodes that act as a, a CTDB round robin for Samba access. So all of their Windows clients are now able to access the Lustre file system. And they're layering technologies on top of this system as well, which allows them to implement uh, sync and share technologies as well with Lustre. So if the researchers are working remotely or collaborating with people on non-traditional Linux type systems, we have users accessing this central repository for collaboration and data. And it's a very interesting use case for Lustre. Um, and we've had it up and running there for the last year. It's scaled from just a couple of hundred terabytes to over a petabyte recently. And all of that scaling has been done completely on the fly without the need for any sort of downtime or maintenance. So there's a good story there out of Montana. We're very, very proud of that. Um, more recently as well, we've worked with a company in the UK that's doing sound effects and visual effects. Um, and I think this is quite interesting because we're starting to see more adoption of Lustre solutions in the commercial space. So no longer is it just being used for the, the traditional HPC and sciences. It's starting to really gain traction in the commercial world as well. And you know, we're very, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting to see somebody doing special effects in movies that I'm watching with my children instead of some of the other science stuff, some, something that we can kind of relate to as well. Um, but again, this is a, a very interesting solution because they have Ethernet clients, InfiniBand clients, Windows clients, and Linux clients. So it's again used in a very, very heterogeneous environment with multiple fabrics and multiple end clients using it for access. So again, quite a complex solution, but uh, a kind of a demonstration of some of the capabilities we have in-house to deliver these Lustre solutions. Um, the building block for the data scaler L, and we have it on our boot um, out in the exhibition hall, is based on this 90 bay uh, 4U top loaded system. So we're able to put in you know, close to 540 terabytes usable space per 4U building block, and that allows us to get to 4.5 petabytes usable per rack for Lustre deployments, uh, getting close to 8 petabytes raw. And again, we're using some of the latest technologies on this platform as well. So it's been started and testified with uh, Mellanox's EDR 100 gig uh, K, uh, cards. And we're also using SAS SSDs for the metadata to increase the IOPS capability, very high capacity SAS then for the actual object storage to target. And then to kind of keep everyone in order, we have this client throttling technology as well, which is a nice unique selling point as well on this uh, platform. Um, another couple of uh, diagrams of the system here, so you can kind of see the, the shelf and the cage at the back and how easy it is to actually access the system and do maintenance on it. Um, but we've been measuring it in the lab and we're able to get over 20 gigs uh, of throughput out of this individual shelf itself. Um, we do use Intel's Enterprise Edition for Lustre, but we customize that heavily for uh, preemptive monitoring of all of the actual hardware, getting into the disk layer, identifying smart errors, memory check exceptions inside the systems and all of that stuff, and do bare metal provisioning of all the actual systems and have them all managed and uh, coordinated from the one single event. So it's, uh, it's not just uh, Intel layered on top of hardware. We've got a lot of intelligence and capability that we've developed around this product for uh, specifically for our um, hardware platforms. Um, coming soon, we've also got uh, full NVMe tiers, so there's a lot of excitement around the capability of NVMM. Um, and at the moment, I'm trying to get my boss to give me 96 of them so I can try them out in the lab. He's not too keen on me doing that. I believe they cost a couple of quid each. But um, 
We have got servers that can facilitate 10 and 24 NVMe drives per system, and we're going to be using these as a top tier within our Lustre appliance, so consider these to be like a burst buffer. Um, so we're able to get over kind of 10 gigs per rack you with these NVMe solutions, and we'll be kind of developing white papers and stuff with Intel on that over the next while. Um, so kind of look forward to that as a, as a next-gen product that should be coming very, very soon. But yeah, the promise of NVMe as a, as a, a very top tier within Luster is you know, very exciting for us and something that we're working on the lab as well at the moment. So with that said, let me hand you over to Rosemary, who will speak a bit more about the, uh, the exciting part of it. Thank you very much, Dave. So, um, hi, I'm the CEO of Alexis. Uh, we're a software partner of Boston, and I'm going to be telling you about a new product that we're developing called Mistral, which aims to do load balancing for shared storage by monitoring the I.O. and throttling the bandwidth so that all of your applications can get their fair share. So we're developing this along with a number of our partners. We're working with the ARM IT department um, in their, um, uh, in their uh, chip design department, as well as a number of other uh, different um, partners, such as Boston and Cancer Research in the, in the UK. So Mistral is designed for the high performance computing and scientific computing sector. The idea is that it will monitor your application I.O. And, your, and the performance across the whole cluster. Um, that means that it can identify hotspots and rogue jobs that are doing too much I.O. and give you real time information about those applications. On top of that, we can then use that information to do load balancing and then automatically throttling the jobs so that so that all of your applications can run at their maximum performance. So this is the world that we, that we work in. We um, assume that jobs are submitted to the cluster via the scheduler. We've already started integrating Mistral with a number of different schedulers, such as the uh, platform LSF scheduler, um, so that your users don't even know that it's there. The idea is then you get lots of information about local storage, but more importantly, lots of information about your network storage, uh, such as the, the Luster system from Boston. Um, because it works at the application level, we can give you information about all kinds of different storage you're using. We see exactly what your applications see, so we can give you lots more information than you would normally get from the analytics built into your, to your storage system. So the main problem that we're looking to solve is the noisy neighbor problem. That's when one user deliberately or accidentally submits a job to the cluster or a set of jobs that do too much I.O., overload the file system, and prevent other users from getting on with their, with their work. So in a, um, in a normal day-to-day, -day, this might just affect the performance of your file system. Other users might complain that the, that the clusters running slowly. In extreme circumstances, this can actually take down the cluster completely. So uh, a common complaint from our customers is that users submit jobs with the debug flag left on, and so you do a 1,000 times more I.O. than is expected. But there are also metadata operations that can cause problems. Uh, one of our customers had um, a user where they'd put the open and close operation inside a for loop accidentally so every single read and write has an open and close operation, and that was enough to bring down the metadata storage completely. So it's that kind of disaster that our software will tell you about and avoid. So how does it work? So every job on the cluster gets wrapped up in our unique technology. We look at I.O. bandwidth, so that could be the amount of data, or it could be the number of operations, the number of metadata operations, for example. And if a job exceeds a threshold that you have set, then uh, it sends you an alert. So it might say that job 42, this particular process, this particular application has exceeded this threshold that you've set. So that you know if you are experiencing bad performance on the file system, exactly which process on exactly which job and which node is, is causing that problem. The other thing we will be monitoring is the latency of the file system, so we can tell you how long each operation takes. So if your users are complaining about poor performance, or if 
For example, some of your jobs are experiencing bad performance in a very tiny hotspot, but the rest of the system is running normally. We'll tell you about that as well. Now, the next step is obviously to do something about that automatically. So obviously, once you've got the information, you can always go and kill the job or go and find the user and hang them upside down or whatever it is you want to do. Um, but it's much better to solve the problem at the source. So what we do is we notice when the, um, when they are, when the IO latency increases and we turn throttling on. And when it decreases, we turn throttling off. This can be done automatically by Mistral, but it can also be done by you if you have more information that, um, from the whole system that we, that we don't have access to. You have complete control over doing that. So what happens is once we've turned the throttling on, we'll impose a maximum bandwidth to your jobs. And so the jobs that are doing too much I.O. and are slowing down the system, they get held back while all your other jobs continue at maximum performance. So over time, what we hope is that you don't actually turn on the throttling functionality very often at all. What we want to do is use that in only very extreme circumstances, and the rest of the time, build up a history of I.O. use to give you a much better understanding of what your jobs are doing, how much I.O. they're using, and feed that information back to your users so they can make better decisions when designing the CAD flows, designing the, the, the pipelines of your software. So you can even do job-specific contracts with, with uh, separate limits so that, if you can, so that you can tell the difference between jobs that are expected to do a lot of I.O. and jobs that are not. You don't have to do this for every single job, but you might be able to group jobs together and say, these ones are high priority, give them very, very high limits, whereas these jobs are low priority or they're not expected to do much I.O., so let's throttle them very, very quickly if they start causing a problem. The, the key information uh, that I want to get across is that what we're giving you is data and control over your file system. So how does it work together? So the idea is you can tune your, uh, tune your applications for your file system. Um, you can get far more out of your file system once you know exactly what the data patterns look like. And this can be combined with the analytics that you already get from, from the Lustre file system. Obviously, um, there are data analytics that Mistral can't give you, but at the same time, because we give you data at the application level, this is invaluable information that you can combine with the overall performance of the, of the file system to make better decisions when tuning Mistral and better decisions when tuning Lustre. So if you have any other questions, I'll be sticking around along with my colleague, Felicity. So uh, just stop me if you want any more information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rosemary. And, and yeah, so kind of just to wrap it up, I mean, that's um, an excellent technology that we've seen in the lab, and it really addresses a, a problem that we see in clusters and user systems. I mean, the, the, the great reference we give is when you have a group of undergraduates using the system and you have a professor who's contributed some funding towards the system and the undergraduate with a, a silly for loop with opens and closes inside and there means the professor who's actually contributed funding towards the system doesn't get to utilize the system easily. So it allows us to do quality of service around our I.O. and ensure that everyone has a kind of a fair user experience or you know, kind of keeps all users equally unhappy, I think is the, the goal of really the system admin. So. We have um, a test cluster in-house where we're um, prototyping this tool, and Rosemary and ourselves are very interested in working with um, customers to actually get this out into the market and test and evaluate it further. So if you feel you have a, a good use case for this, we'd be very interested in speaking to you further. Um, and with that said, I think we'll wrap it up.